Welcome to another episode of Lifestyles. I'm your host, Craig Sewing. We got an awesome show today celebrating America's finest city. We go out to the marketplace to visit some of the fun things happening here in San Diego, but also the real estate markets with our co hosts, Jen Morris and Lindsay Tour. Got a great show lined up for you. Let's go ahead and get it started right now. Here we are at the Courtyard, downtown San Diego. America's finest city is also America's funnest city. We're gonna go learn the story of how this all came together, the stuff that's happening during baseball season and even the events in the off season. Let's go check it out right now. This is a great story of San Diego. Here we are downtown in an iconic spot, the Courtyard. Maybe you've been down here before. We're with the owner, Phil Ocatel, and his right-hand gal, April Ball, who does the marketing and the events and all the fun stuff. Yeah. A little yeah, morning coffee. Thanks for having us down. Cool. It's, a pleasure. So it's a pretty cool story, but Phil, share it with us. First and foremost, you're the owner. How do you how do you own this? Well, how, how'd you get into this? Sure. Uh, myself and a couple other buddies own the place. Uh, we got together when we were students over at New School of Architecture and Design. Uh, this was actually a thesis project. Really? So, which was pretty cool. We. Um, what was the thesis? <laughs> The thesis was looking at city-owned property uh, that was empty, blighted, vacant, and how we could actually start to activate it for the community. The whole essence behind it was, if it's city-owned, it's owned by the community, and how can we actually engage the community into it? Wow, and you get to have all the fun stuff going on down here, so what are some of the things you guys have been doing leading up to today? What have you done so far? So we have concerts here, we have beer tasting, wine tasting, food comes in all of the time. Upcoming at the end of November on the 26th, we have a small business market that's open to the community. We really highlight all the small businesses, not only in East Village, but in the entire downtown area, entire San Diego area. We invite everybody over, have a drink, have some food, check out the vendors, and just enjoy company with everyone. Yeah, I've been down here for ball games. It gets yeah. pretty active down here, people pre-gaming it. So baseball season is probably a big time of year for you. Baseball season's fun. Like, um, I think, you know, for us it's all about activating the space and that's, you know, depending on what's going on around. Um, whether it's baseball, whether it's the Chargers, whether it's Comic Con. Uh, but daily activation too is super successful. You know, we've got a coffee shop on the corner. Right. We got some people grab a coffee in the morning, they come through, we've got a 5,000 square foot dog park and take your dog out. Uh, then during the day, you know, we have, we have food trucks that come in, we have free Wi-Fi, people come down and bring their lunch. Uh, then after work, you grab a beer, happy air, and you take your dog yeah, out again. Yeah, I think that's incredible. So we're obviously here in the morning, I guess at 11 o'clock every morning behind us. Yep. That opens up. So what, what happens from there? Bloody Mary's, you got coffee behind you. When's lunch start? I mean, so this just gets active at 11 o'clock yeah, every day? 11 o'clock, the food trucks roll in, the restaurants and the bars open up. Um, students, people, business people, whoever comes down and play games and cornhole and yeah, whatever, it's good. So what are your guys' goals, right? I mean, I've been down here, it's always a lot of fun, but how, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to grow? Or obviously you're doing events, you're trying to add more events. What do, what do you think the future is? I would like to see Courtyard become even more so a place for everyone. I would like to see it expand to different areas. So not only on the corner of Park and Market, but we can have courtyards all over San Diego that everybody gets to come to. I would like to see it be successful and become a second home to people where they can come hang out with their friends on a weeknight and they can come to a concert on the weekends and just embody San Diego even more than it already does. Well, San Diego, they've done such a good job developing everything, I think. I mean, the city's expanding. I, in my opinion, it's like we we have the benefit of being one of the later emerging cities. You look at like San Francisco, New York, Chicago, the way they're developing the city right now is you're getting the residential, the commercial, and, and here is a good example of the social scene here. And I'm sure that had to be something that you were really prideful of when you got involved. Yeah, absolutely. We came into this project, uh, I mean, we knew that, you know, eventually there's gonna be another high rise here. This is a city owned property and that's the ultimate goal is that they wanna sell it to a developer. Um, but the idea is how can we activate it for now, create a placeholder for that future development and create a community space out of that. So at some point in time, that's probably gonna happen here. Yep. And then where do you go from there? That's the idea. And then we can, the idea of the shipping container is we can literally pick everything up, we can move to a new location and start reactivating somewhere else. Well, this is one of the fun parts of San Diego. I encourage you to get down here. Phil, you have a yeah, great geez. entrepreneurial spirit about Pleasure. you. 
You are the fun one of the group. <laughs> so Definitely. now what's, what's the next big event to look forward to? So we have the small business market coming up on Saturday the 26th. It's from 12 to 6 p.m. We're going to bring in food vendors. We're going to bring in craft vendors, all small businesses from San Diego. And we just invite everybody to come out and enjoy a great Saturday craft afternoon vendors with us. vendors like craft beer? We will have craft beer in the bar. Craft beer, yeah. There'll yeah, be absolutely. craft beer in the bar, of course. It's huge in San Diego right now. You guys are tapping that. All right, great stuff. Come down here, have some fun. But let's take it back to Lifestyles. Cheers. Jen Morris for Lifestyle San Diego. We're going to be meeting with top producer Fabi Gonzalez with Coldwell Banker West, the largest real estate company in South Bay. She's going to let us in on why she lives, works, and plays in East Lake. We're at East Lake Lake in the community of East Lake in the city of Chula Vista, and I am joined by top producer Fabi Gonzalez with Coldwell Banker West. Fabi, nice. thank you for having thank us. You. Nice meeting you. So you gave me a little bit of a lesson before we started rolling about the community of East Lake, which is a part of the very large city of Chula Vista. Tell me a little bit about East Lake. We are in the east side of Chula Vista, and it's called East Lake, but there's nine communities within this huge community of East Lake. But we're still in Chula Vista and we're part of the San Diego County, of course. So what makes East Lake different? This was a planned community, and since the beginning, it was voted San Diego's best for 10 years in a row by the Union Tribune. So that just tells you how beautiful this community is. Everything was planned. We have this man-made lake that we're standing in front of. This is one of the amenities, but there's so much more. School district, just the community itself, the people that move here so close to the Navy base, so so many military families move here because of the school district. Well, you also moved here. You said you were originally in National City? Yes. I was living in National City for five years, and when my kids got older, I'm like, you know, I want to go to that school district. So I worked really hard to be able to move here, and that was 15 years ago. And you moved into Eastlake? Yes. I so you, you literally live, work, and yes, play here. Yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, well, let's get more into the amenities of this community. You, you mentioned the school system, which is a 10 out of 10? Yes, we have a couple of schools that are rated 10, and everybody else is 8 and 9. That's Nobody below phenomenal. 8. phenomenal. Yes. So people Great. come here for the schools, but they also come here, I'm sure, for the restaurants, the outdoor activities. Tell us a little bit about yes. that. We do have big chain restaurants here. We have the Cheesecake Factory. There's usually a line to get in there, but it's always so much fun being at the Otay Ranch Mall. We have P.F. Chang's, we have Chili's. I mean, there's so many restaurants. One of the things I couldn't believe about East Lake and Chula Vista is the close proximity to downtown. Yes, it's like 15, 20 minutes, depending on traffic, but we're so close to the Petco Park. We're close to the Navy base, 15 minutes if you go through IB, 10 minutes to the beach. We're close to everything. So let's get into the amenities a little bit more. Yes, we have the Otay Lake, so you can bring your family there on the weekends. It's open three or four days a week. And you can also go fishing there. Get your fishing license right on the spot. Go fishing with the family. We have beautiful walking trails all around the lake, around the community, around this lake. We have tennis courts. We have basketball courts. We have private parks. We have we have so many things. We have so many pools. We have the golf courses. There's two of them. So a lot of outdoor living, it sounds like. Yes, this community was planned like that. It was planned for healthy living, for happy living, great schools. That's the way it was planned, and it really has worked out that way. Is that why East Lake tends to be a little bit more expensive than other communities in Chula Vista? Chula Vista. Yes, the median price right now is four seventy-five in Chula Vista. If you do like the whole city, but here in East Lake, we're at six hundred for the median price of a home, and then in. Rolling Hills, which is also part of East Lake, it's 800,000. So they're a little higher, but it's totally worth it. I mean, you won't have to pay for a private school. And you know, if we talk about the proximity to downtown, if you're taking a four or five bedroom house here, that's six or hundred thousand dollars, downtown it's a million and a half. Exactly. Right. Even where you are, right? <laughs> In Carlsbad. Right. Yes, I need to move to East Lake, I think. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can still have a water view here. <laughs> I love that. I want to talk a little bit about how you got into real estate in the first place. I love this story. You were originally working retail. Yes, I had worked retail since I was 16 years old and I, I loved sales and customer service, helping people. So this broker came into the store with his wife and he said, you're such a good salesperson. You should be selling bigger things. I'm like, like what? Like houses. I'm like, oh, really? Well, maybe I should. <laughs> it's like, well, do you think maybe that's how I can get into East Lake? He's like, yes, let's get you your license. I'm like, let's sell your condo in National City and get you to a bigger house in East Lake. And that's how I moved here and I got my license. Wow, what an incredible story. 
So you really walk the walk when you talk about wanting to come here and you were a single mom, raise your family here and be in this community. I know you say that when once you come here, you never want to leave. You never want to leave. You know, it's, everything is nice here. Like why go anywhere else? <laughs> and there's so many jobs. There's so much to do here. Spend your weekends here, work during the week. I mean, you can do it all here. A lot of single moms think that it's hard, but you know what, it's not. If you focus and you make it a goal, you get here. You get here. You've been in real estate now for about 15 years. You've been through the recession, yes. through the economic housing crisis. Tell me how Chula Vista has bounced back from that and the community of Eastlake, and if it has, or have we surpassed what we were before? Yes, we've definitely passed that already. It was in 2008 when it was really hard, like, you know, half of the people here lost their homes, including myself. You know, you had houses that you paid $600,000 for, and they were worth 300,000. So you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna have to do a short sale or let it go to foreclosure. But right now, all those families, they bought again. So, you know, oh, we're back so to great. normal. Prices are good. People are upgrading, some are downsizing, the kids got older, so it's it's back to normal. But yet they stay in East Lake. Yes, we stay here. <laughs> I know that you have a listing video to show us of a great example of a house available in East Lake. Yes, we have this beautiful five bedroom house and you'll be able to show it to All right, everyone. Thank you so much, let's yes. take a look. Show, you are a part of Coldwell Banker West, which is the largest real estate brokerage firm in South Bay. Yes, it became the largest one in the last 10 years. So I'm very proud to be there. I did leave for a couple of months, but you know, I came you back came right, right back. <laughs> Yes, I did. I'm like, Peter, I need to get back in there. It's such a beautiful company. The people, the support you get from our company, our broker is the best. So I love Coldwell Banker West. That's phenomenal. Well, Fabi, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Thank you. Nice meeting you. And you too. You need to come here more often. I definitely will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fabi Gonzalez just shared with us all the reasons why she lives, works, and plays in Eastlake. I'm Jim Morris for Lifestyle San Diego. So here we are with the Errol Asuncion, who has become a, a great friend of mine over the years, and we are at the bootlegger. The boot. So it would make sense to have, <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's just a prop, but a the, prop. Fi the fireball shot. Uh, thanks for having us down here, man. This is something that you've had your fingerprints all over the growth of. It's one of the more successful bar slash restaurants in San Diego, but you've done a lot of other things. But Start us right where we're at. Tell us about Bootlegger, your guys' vision, where you're at, where you're going. Yeah, it's, you know, it's actually a wonderful story. Um, Bootlegger was brought on by friends that worked in the industry uh, that saw a real need for another, call it your own cheers in San Diego, yeah. specifically in the East Village area. So we were very fortunate to find this property and my partners are all, again, steeped in the industry, years of it. You included. 100%. Yep. Uh, and the great thing about it is that it all happened organically. So from the, from the get-go, as, as most of business owners know, it's it's not always a straight trajectory. You know, there was bumps around the whole. I mean, and I got to remind our audience, we're right in the heart of downtown. If you don't hear the sirens or the 
the uh, fire trucks going by, and obviously we got a lot of people here already at lunch, so bear with us on the elements. Well, the good thing, every time you hear that, for me, it resonates a fireball shot every time you hear that fire truck. It would, it would be a sin right now if we did not. I think we should. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Fireball. So explain the fireball shot, man. Let's skip to that. Yeah, so it's a great concept, great idea that we all, to be honest, I can't even remember who put it together, but because the um, station four is right down the street, uh, and we- Fire put, station. Fire station, yeah, yeah, number four is right down the street. Uh, and we really, you know, we believe in what they do. You know, we know they work hard. So we put up a bell and this new product came around. This is 2011. When you fire, say product, fireball. fireball. Yeah. yeah. So it just made sense every time they came around, we put a bell up there, we ring the bell, we put the fire truck lights on, and we do shots of fireball for four bucks. Aren't you and, like one of their most successful venues yeah. in the country? Yeah, we literally went through like at least three cases a week <laughs> during that time. So I can honestly say that there was a lot of fireball happening here in, in Bootlegger. Yeah, so we're at Bootlegger, which is a, a very iconic spot, but you've also been involved with a lot of things. Every time I chat with you, it seems like you got something new going on. So what are some of the other things happening in the downtown social scene? Well, San Diego actually has been blowing up. I'm really excited. When I moved here in 96, there was nothing here. And in fact, this area you wouldn't even walk into, but you know, the groups that have been putting this together, you're like, not just our social syndicate, but the RMD group with Sidebar, um, Flux, we have Omnia's in town from Las Vegas, we have uh, the Vrant groups doing really well, Barley Mash. It's a real, it's, it's its own like community within the bar restaurant scene, and it's just been flourishing. So, so how do you, I mean, I, my dad was in the barn restaurant industry, and it's, it's a challenging one. In fact, even if you look right here, there was several failures here before Bootlegger came along. So how do you guys identify the good spots to go and attract the masses the way that you do? That's an interesting question because a lot of these things are just plain luck. I mean, you plan it, you wanna make sure that you're in the most visible spot. We were very lucky to be on the corner of 8th and Market, uh, super you know, focused to where this area is growing. But we also, within internally, we just, we saw the need for where the people want to go. We want a very open, inviting area. I mean, nightclubs are awesome, but we want people that on the everyday can just come in, have a great meal, have a nice beer, have a great conversation with the person next to you. So that was, for us, was one of the things that really struck gold. Uh, and there's other spots here, too, in that San Diego area, because we have the ballpark right here. This, the city's just right. thriving. There's so many beautiful things. And opening up our doors to doing these um, garage doors has been clutch for us as well. And other venues are doing the same, because we're in San Diego. Yep. You know, we're taking advantage of this beauty, and, and people are really being successful from it. So one of the cool things about downtown that I think is that it's being built the right way. It's, it's like San Diego has the luxury of being one of the later emerging cities. So they're developing the commercial side, the restaurants, the social scene, but also the residential side. I mean, parks and recreation, all this stuff is being developed down here right now. And I know that San Diego is becoming this kind of offshoot of San Francisco from innovation, entrepreneurship, which I don't know if people know this about you. Not only are you uh, the, the social guy here in all these bars and restaurants, but you're also an entrepreneur and you guys are developing something really cool. Yeah. Share the story. Yeah, so um, we have a company called industry.co, not com, .co. Think of us as the LinkedIn for the service and hospitality industry. So the 17 million people working in bars, restaurants, nightclubs, and hotels, they use Craigslist. They don't go to LinkedIn mm -hmm. because that's not really the space for them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's mostly for a corporate, but you know, as a waiter, as a, as a bartender, where do you showcase yourself? So we created a platform, which is awesome, that's specifically to this niche. Um, it was about uh, two years ago that we kind of came to the idea. I've been literally, I get 20 to 30 phone calls a day, text emails for people, hey, I need a job. I have business saying, hey, I really need to find the right person. Where do you go for that? So industry was the answer that we were able to, to give to the world, and it's been really awesome. We, we're not just in brick and mortars. Um, we also do events. So, mm. so Kabu, that uh, the event that was this past week, concert, yeah, it was amazing. Um, you guys were involved with that? Yeah, we, we brought over 140 employees to, to the table for them. And so this this was the huge San Diego concert that had what a hundred bands, mm -hmm. multiple and venues. I was I went to it was great. Yeah, chefs. They had multiple venues. It was phenomenal. So how were you guys involved in that? Uh, what what they wanted, which was really unique, is that. Not to say that the concessionaires um, weren't doing a great job, but they really wanted to showcase what San Diego's actual populace 
were like. So some of the bartenders that you'd see at other venues, they wanted to see those faces working at, at the event as well. So gave it a little bit more personality, um, a lot better, like a lot of the service was stepped up in that respect. So we brought that because our whole niche is we have those people on our platform uh, and they're able to service that and give these people another opportunity to, to, to get outside of just their bar and earn extra money, so it was great. So Lifestyles is a show really celebrating the fact that we live in America's finest city. You're as connected as anybody down here. What do we have to look forward to, man? Is there anything on the horizon, concerts, restaurants, anything you know of? You know, there's always something new coming up. There's a lot of food festivals, galas that are in here. I mean, you got the most beautiful place in the, I think, in the, in the country yeah. um, that you can celebrate that. Uh, I'm really excited right now, though. It's, it's football season, you know. Yeah. This bar specifically goes, um, it's really busy and it's fun. Uh, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, outside of that, you know, you can walk up and down the street and so find something new or go to the beach or, you know, find something exciting. Well, Errol, thanks for bringing us Excellent. in here, showing us around uh, Bootlegger and certainly all of downtown San Diego. Thanks for the fireball shot. Uh, you know, I got to get back and do some stuff. It's weird being down here in a suit today. Well, you I'm look nice. To. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. America's finest city. We're celebrating it. Back to the show. tour for Lifestyle San Diego. Today we're here at one of the most popular restaurants in Rancho San Diego, Sahara Taste of the Middle East, where we're going to be hearing from dynamic real estate duo Lyle and Grace Cadell. They're going to talk about all of the exciting things happening here in East County, and we're going to hear from the restaurant owner himself, Joe Salem. So let's go hear from them now. All right, I'm here with real estate duo Lyle and Grace Cadell at a cute restaurant that you guys love so much. Mm -hmm. Tell us where we're at today. Hey, we're in Rancho San Diego. This is a great part of our community. We're at the Sahara Taste of the Middle East. I'm telling you guys, this is a great restaurant to come and check out. It's got all the best food you could possibly imagine from the Middle East. Definitely worth trying. I mean, it's right here in front of us. I'm starving. <laughs> I can't wait to sit in. What is you guys' favorite on this menu? Uh, Do you have one? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much everything. We usually come here um, during for lunch or we come here after football games on Friday nights. And I love the Sahara salad with chicken shawarma, which Sahara is right here. Yeah. Okay. Sahara <laughs> salad, I'll have to try that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Man, hey, Grace is right. Everything is good here, but I'm a real fan of the chicken tikka with the sa saffron rice and the ch uh, cheese flatbreads over here. But you know what? The kids love the Sahara fries here, and that's like a big thing here. You gotta try it. I mean, this is not just your normal restaurant that you go to, a bunch of fattening food. It's really a healthy food place to go to. Yeah. I mean, not only do they have fries, but they have that choice for, you know, people that are looking for something that's not as, you know, yeah, something, overdone. Something for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. Something for everybody, exactly. Now, where is this located? I know it's in El Cajon, but where can somebody find it? Well, it's here at Rancho San Diego, actually. Well, it's a suburb of El Cajon. It's right here on Hamishaw Road in the, the, the Rancho San Diego Spring Valley area. It's right behind the Burger King. You can't miss it. Let's talk a little bit about the area here in East County. I know it's near and dear to your guys' hearts. You guys live here. You've been here a long time. What is it about this place that makes it so special that you guys choose to work in? Well, you know, Rancho San Diego, is a, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful area. East County in general. We just, I've been here 49 years my whole life. So we've, we've been able to see some amazing changes here from, you know, the restaurant scene to the social scenes to, you know, all the wonderful things that we have for children to do here. Our school systems are just phenomenal. We've had a, a real big Middle Eastern population move to East County um, over the last, you know, 25, 30 years. It seems to be really growing. This is their hub is right here in Rancho San Diego. Why do you think so? Uh, many years ago, back in the 80s, um, their head church was 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 uh, built right here in Rancho San Diego. So for the whole United States, Rancho San Diego came on the map with the Middle Eastern culture. Now let's talk a little bit more about the real estate market right now in your eyes. Since we're coming uh, to the end of the year here, uh -huh. what are you kind of seeing happening right now? 
Well, it's it's just amazing how we've been we've seen such a big change in our business out here. It seems to be really really growing because we have that many more people coming to the to this area. We, for example, just this year we got about three thousand more families coming to this part of San Diego, right here in Rancho San Diego, and they're coming here and they're looking to rent homes or looking to buy homes at all different levels. So, we're, and we're getting to meet some really wonderful people at all different price ranges. Right. <laughs> what kind of types of homes can you find in this area? Oh, all types. I mean, we, we have wonderful homes from entry level up to the multi-million dollar estates. I mean, right here in Rancho San Diego, I find that there is so many beautiful homes. We have nice track developments. We have custom homes on the golf courses out here. We got beautiful mountains all the way around us. And this is what the people are looking for, you know, in our community to wake up every day and say, it's beautiful here. I like this, <laughs> I like this place. Well, we have, <laughs> yeah, and we have condos and townhomes, so it's not just single family residents. So we have everything. Something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Something for everybody, exactly. Now, this is a family owned restaurant. Yeah. Well, this family, um, the Salem family owns this, this uh, you know, this restaurant, Sahara. And they, they've been chefs and cooks for over 60 years. So they bring a lot of experience to the table. So I like to know that my food's being cooked by some of the best. And these people know what they're doing. <laughs> well, I need to know the ins and outs of how it works, how all the magic happens back here. So I'm going to go talk to Joe, correct? Yep, Joe. Joe himself. Let's go do that. All right, we are here where all the magic happens with the owner himself, Joe. So good to have you back here. Right. So good to be back here. Yeah. I mean, thanks for coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Owner of Sahara Restaurant here uh -huh. with your father, correct? Yes, that's right. He's the one who started this all. He had the, the master plan idea. Oh, yeah. Has he always been interested in food? Or as long as I can remember, yeah. So really? I've grown up in the kitchen business for my yeah. whole entire life. So uh, back here, just kind of slaving away. So give us a little history of this restaurant. How did it all start? Um, well, we, I think he picked it up in like early 2000s. Okay. It was actually located next door, which has since been like renovated and turned into a sports bar. We moved into a small unit here. Mm -hmm. And then after our first year and a half, we expanded, took over a failing business that was next door, took over, expanded to just help cater to the demand right. of of the you know success we were having. Okay, so I loved hearing all about how this goes down here and what takes place. I loved the fire, what is it, the fire oven grill? Yeah, yeah. And make these flatbreads. Are you ready to dig in? Oh, yeah, definitely. Let's do in. it. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's all for today's show. Hope you enjoyed exploring America's finest city with us. Lifestyles is a show that is really there to show you the great beaches and sunsets and social scenes, but also dreaming big about the real estate market. Hope you enjoyed it. You can find everything at craigsewing.com. Don't forget, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. We're there everywhere, and you can engage in the conversation. Until next week, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you then.